Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Recently I have looked at two different theories regarding ancient high technology. The first was that the ancients harnessed the power of the sun and the second was that they used the power of sound to cut, drill and shape hard igneous rock. But many people are commenting on my videos or emailing me to state that they believe that the ancient civilizations didn't always haul massive stone blocks but poured geopolymer concrete and therefore many of the stones that we see are actually artificial and after reviewing the evidence I have to agree. In the 1980s a French material scientist named Joseph Davidovitz proposed the theory that the ancient Egyptians didn't move the huge stone blocks to the pyramids but rather made the blocks one by one in situ. Davidovitz suggested that the blocks were formed by pouring an ancient concrete, which he called a geopolymer, into wooden moulds. He argues that, because of the technique, only a fraction of the believed pyramid building labour force would have been needed, and instead of moving blocks, they moved sacks of wet geopolymer concrete and poured them into wooden forms that were placed exactly where each block was needed. He argues that joints between the poured concrete blocks would always be perfectly accurate and incredibly precise as a compacted moist mixture hardens against the neighbouring blocks. So what was the mixture made of? Davidovitz suggested that the geopolymer concrete was made from crushed limestone, clay, water and lime, a highly alkaline activator that caused the crushed limestone mixture to reconstitute into a man-made stone. Obviously, Davidovitz's theory caused quite a stir amongst Egyptologists, historians and material science researchers and the theory cannot go unnoticed. I'm not a material scientist, but if the methodology is plausible, then it could certainly explain a more efficient way to create such amazing feats of limestone construction. And if the limestone quarries were simply mined for a crushed mixture, no great care would have had to have been taken and the job wouldn't have been all that difficult. But if the Egyptians did cast blocks from an early form of concrete, many established theories that assign the invention of mass-produced concrete to the Romans would be off by many thousands of years, especially as the date of the pyramids may be far older than is currently believed. Back in the 1980s, Davidovitz's idea didn't receive a great amount of support, but it did interest Michael Barsom. Professor of Material Science at Drexel University, and he was surprised that nobody had firmly proved or disproved the theory. Barsum, along with a graduate student named Adrish Ganguly, began studying samples from the inner and outer casings of the pyramids. What they thought would be a short study ended up taking five years, and although they disproved some of Davidovitz's ideas, they did prove his overall theory. Barsum believes that the Egyptians did cast a portion of the blocks that make up the pyramids, but through electron microscopy analysis he showed that the Egyptians didn't use clay in their geopolymer mixture, as Davidovitz proposed, but rather diatomaceous earth, a naturally occurring, commonly found, soft sedimentary rock made from microfossils. Barsum believes that only the exterior casing stones and the stones at the very highest levels of the pyramid were cast geopolymer blocks, and this makes sense. The outer casing stones of the pyramid were the most precise with extremely accurate joints and were on display for all to see. Geopolymer, therefore, would be an appropriate application, and the blocks at the highest levels would be very hard to transport into position using traditional means. So this method of geopolymer blocks made life far easier. They would also be easy to repair. Another professor of material science, Lynn Hobbs, at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, has also added to the research. Hobbs' students reverse-engineered another sample of geopolymer stone and found that the concrete was made from crushed limestone, kaolinite, silica and natron salts a substance found in the evaporated remains of saline lake beds. When exposed to water, natron salts become alkaline, a perfect activator to make a geopolymer reaction. 
Of course, the Egyptology establishment claim the theory and associated research is absolute nonsense, and they dismiss the claims without reason or discussion. In recent years, geologists have proved that the Sphinx is far older, yet Egyptologists don't accept the scientific proof. And now, material scientists have proved that geopolymers were used to make some of the blocks of the pyramids. And yet, Egyptologists again don't accept the scientific evidence. But as recent as 2013, there was yet more scientific evidence for the geopolymer theory presented. A study published in the renowned Europhysics News, the magazine of the European Physical Society, described how a paleomagnetism study on several pyramid stones demonstrates the validity of Davidovitz's theory on the artificial nature of the pyramid stones. Two scientists made a paleomagnetic investigation into the blocks from two of the Giza pyramids, based on the assumption that if the blocks were made in situ by the geopolymer concrete technique, then their magnetic moments would all be parallel, orientated in a north-south direction as the mixture cooled. If they were constructed from blocks transported from the nearby quarries, having been rotated randomly during transportation and construction, then the magnetic moments would all be orientated randomly. The samples tested all showed the same north-south magnetic alignment, strongly suggesting that they had been produced in situ by a concrete technique. Furthermore, in 2011, nuclear magnetic resonance spectra were obtained for casing stones from Snefru's Bent Pyramid, as well as the two limestone quarries in the area. The results showed that the casing stones consisted of limestone grains from the Chura quarry, but cemented with an amorphous calcium silicate gel formed by human intervention. Interestingly, the famine stella, which is engraved on a rock at the island Sehel near Elephantine, Egypt, north of Aswan, was deciphered by Egyptologists and included two famous early ancient Egyptian characters, Pharaoh Zosa and Imhotep. It was engraved around 200 BC, but various clues make Egyptologists think that it was actually much earlier, dating back to around the 3rd dynasty. The most controversial aspect of this text is the fact that when it talks about building large structures, no construction stone is mentioned. Instead, Zosa was given a list of minerals and ores. Many have studied the text in great detail, and they say that it describes the processing of different minerals, which could be the chemicals involved in the fabrication of man-made stone, or a type of concrete. It is safe to say that, at the very least, the casing stones of the Egyptian pyramids were not quarried natural stone, but were in fact moulded from a geopolymer concrete mixture, and yes, the theory has been tried and tested and the outcome shows that the process is relatively easy. The theory has been researched in depth and it has the support of the scientific community, but as always, Egyptologists refuse to entertain the idea because it doesn't fit with the outdated narrative of ancient Egyptian history. Thank you for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please hit the like button and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.